Welcome back to My Little Pony and Friends. Bubbles, what did you do with it? Desiree asked for about the millionth time. But the guinea pig only squeaked back. He didn't understand what she was saying without the necklace. And she didn't understand what he was saying. Could be something like, what are you talking about? Did you say that you'd give me some lettuce? Desiree just looked at him sadly. I wish I knew what you were saying, she said. There was a silence. Ah, oh, said Desiree. She picked up the necklace that she had got free with animals and yo. It looked similar to Bubbles ones, but it had hearts hanging on it, rather than the bows that matched the bow on the end of the key. She held it up to Bubbles and put it round his neck. Bubbles, can you hear me? The guinea pig squeaked. It was no good. That just didn't have the magic in it. She put the necklace down. What am I going to do? I wonder what's happening in Ponyland. If only there was some kind of steps or tunnel that I could go through. But there wasn't. All Desiree could do was sit back and wait. The morning count. Today, Firefly was doing it. Confetti, here. Cool breeze, I'm here. Cosmos, me. Cotton candy. Pony walked over to where the other ponies were standing. Cranberry muffins. She stuck her hoof in the air and ran over to where Cotton Candy had gone. Crumpet? I'm just here. The list went on until they got to Song Glory. Song Glory? No reply. Song glory. There was no one there. Song glory. But nobody replied. Then suddenly the pony walked over to where the other ponies had gone. The list went on with ponies walking over to the place where they were supposed to go. Until they got to twilight. All of the ponies shouted together her name. But the little pony did not reply. Desiree walked down the garden there must be another copy of that necklace somewhere. The ponies will send me another one. Suddenly she realised the ponies probably didn't even know. Well, surely one of them knows. But then a thought hit her. What if it's a pony who's already been captured? 
We don't know what state they're in now. She looked at Bubbles sadly as she just put in the A-frame. Then suddenly, an idea hit her. She ran to the key. She managed to break the bow off the rest of the key. And she saw that there was a tiny little hole at the top of the bow. She threaded a ribbon through it and put it round Bubbles neck. Bubbles, she said. Desiree, I can hear you, said the guinea pig. Suddenly the doorbell rang. I'd better not go now, Desiree said. Go where, said the guinea pig. Where do you think? But there's one problem. That's what I suddenly thought. If I can communicate with Bubbles by putting this bow on a necklace, it means taking it off of the key. And then he can't move the key. Suddenly, some more of the extra sticky glue appeared in the orange bottle. And Desiree said, You turn the key. I'll stick this bow back on the key. She put the bow back on the key and the bottle disappeared. It stuck immediately and there was the box. She jumped inside closed the lid. Bubbles turned the key and she jumped out of the box still in the kitchen. It hadn't worked. And why? Obviously, there weren't enough, wasn't enough power just in a necklace that was taken apart to make a key. So the necklace must have played a bigger part. Desiree tried to send a message to Ribbons. But it didn't work. Ribbons could only send a message to her and Ribbons didn't know that the key was all they had left. So, if she wanted to get back to Ponyland, she was in big trouble. said Firefly. You were running to your place so fast without even shouting that you'd heard me. Well, I don't know who went to their places. We'll have to do the name count again. She began to shout out names and the ponies began to slowly wave their hooves in the air. Angel me. Applejack, Applejack, Banana Surprise, Banana Surprise, Bangles, me. Firefly broke off of the list and said, I would like it if you'd repeat your name. Barnacle, Barnacle, and so the list went on. But by the end of it, they'd found there were several missing ponies. Cupcake for a start, Fizzy for a second, Gusty for a third, Heartthrob was false. 
to be. And the last one to be found missing was Skylark. Or Princess Skylark. The ponies were getting worried. This can't be true, they shouted. The black pony can't do this to us again. He just can't. Oh yes I can, said the voice. But nobody really heard it. Because just then, the most amazing thing happened. A rock hit the ground right in front of them. A giant blue rock. What's that? said somebody. Everything that the ponies had been holding was then dropped. We've got to get into a shelter. But where? We won't all fit in Paradise Estate. And that's the nearest. If we all go back home, we could get hit by another rock. Where did it come from? The ponies all talked together. Maybe it came from another planet, suggested one of the ponies. Maybe it's just somebody throwing rocks, suggested another pony. One of the ponies made a comment about how strong a pony would have to be to throw a rock that size. But maybe there's some kind of machine, the pony insisted. Perhaps it's one of the missing ponies trying to give us a signal. Perhaps if we all push at once we can turn it over. Perhaps there's a sign underneath. Perhaps it wasn't even thrown by one of the ponies. said another pony. But maybe it was. So what else could they do? I think this is a waste of time. Said one of the ponies who was pushing at the front. I reckon it came from that storm cloud up there and the black pony will throw another one any minute. They heard a distant laugh and kept on pushing even though by now the ponies had guessed the black pony was trying to squash them. Suddenly another rock hit the ground just a few inches from the ponies' noses. The ponies began to scream and ran towards Paradise Estate, blocking the doorway. Mind out! said Buttons. Let me get inside first. Then I'll call you in one by one. But more rocks began to hit all around them. And suddenly one fell on top of Paradise Estate, crushing the roof in. It's not safe in there either. It doesn't squash the ground. Let's start digging. The ponies dug holes and soon had a series of underground tunnels which they hid in. Rocks fell above them, and before long, a rock had fallen in all of the entrances to their tunnels. So they 
people blocked in. There's a round around her garden looking for another necklace. But there weren't any. The ponies obviously didn't know and how could she send a message? She could hardly go there and ask them for another one. Oh, this was silly. She should have had a spare one in the first place. But she hadn't, so that was that. She looked at the soil down the garden and saw something glistening in the sun. A necklace maybe? No, it was just an old bit of pottery that someone must have smashed down the garden, maybe even herself. She looked at it. Is there any other way that she could communicate with bubbles? There must be a way, mustn't there? While they were down in their holes, they didn't notice that several of the ponies had disappeared. But where were the ponies disappearing to? Well, they were disappearing to a little room in the Black Pony's castle. There was only one problem, but now the room that they were in was on fire and they were trapped. These are some of the things the pony screamed as the fire blazed towards them. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Desiree was still searching for a necklace. There were none in the garden. She went to go and sit on the settee. She sat down and waited. The ponies in their tunnels underground suddenly heard a noise. It got louder and louder. This must surely mean that the black pony was around, but why wasn't he speaking? The noise got faster and faster, and the ponies looked at each other. They stayed silent just in case the black pony started to speak. And then, he did. <laughs> Although you don't know where the ponies are, it's quite obvious they're not very far. Don't wait for Desiree, she can't help you. She's lost the necklace and soon the key too. You'd better get those ponies back soon. You only have a few hours. Just watch the moon. All will die if they're not back by daybreak. So get them back for your own sake. <laughs> and then the noise stopped. What do you think we should do? There's nothing we can do, replied Spacehopper sadly. 
All we can do is sit down here and wait. But there is one thing we can do, said Nice and Spicy. We can send Desiree another necklace. And if necessary, three more. And three more keys, said Ivy. And so, they dug their way out of the tunnels and through the necklaces over the edge of Ponyland in the direction of Desiree's house. Desiree went for one last search round the garden. She thought it was useless. She looked around and suddenly saw six little sparkling things in the soil. Three necklaces and three keys. The ponies screamed as loud as they could, hoping that somebody would hear them. But what hope did they have in the hot room where the fire burned? They stared at it. It was coming nearer. What can we do? asked Fizzy. Nothing, replied the two sweetheart sisters sadly. There's nothing we can do at all. The fire got nearer. There has to be a way out said one of the ponies. There just has to be. The ponies back in Ponyland watched as the moon rose into the sky. The words went through their heads. Better get the ponies back soon. You only have a few hours. Just watch the moon. We'd better go to bed, said Nightcap, and began to walk towards Paradise Estate. When nobody followed, she looked back. Aren't you coming? We can't go to bed night, Cap. We've got to watch the moon. All right, said the baby pony, and led the others to the lullaby nursery. It was nearly one o'clock in the morning. Desiree looked out of the window. She put the necklace round Bubble's neck. He'd just had a party in the lounge. I'd better go and put Diesel in the lounge so that she can eat some food, Desiree decided. And she walked off. She heard the ponies in her head calling for help, but she thought it must just be the ponies who'd been caught. They could wait until tomorrow morning. She couldn't go now. Surely they could just wait a few more hours. Just until the sun rose. The ponies watched the moon. It's moving so quickly, said Moon Shadow. Well, we'd better at least make an attempt to find a place. Find a way, I mean, to get to the pump. Oh, to get 
to the Plat Boney's castle, said Tootsie. There has to be a way. They began to walk in one direction when suddenly a pony shouted out from Paradise Estate Don't leave! I don't want to be left! You're deserting me! There, standing in the doorway of Paradise Estate One of the ponies screamed. Twilight lit a candle and they looked as the shape was brightened by the flickering flame. Teaserella, we've forgotten all about you. said Garden Glow. Happily, I'm so pleased that it isn't anything to do with the Black Pony. I think we'd better stay here. The Black Pony's only full of threats. Surely nothing will happen. I have a feeling, said Rubens, that something may well happen. Oh yes, I'm sure something's going to happen. Desiree went to bed. It was one o'clock in the morning and she finally decided that she wasn't going to Ponyland at this time of night, or time of morning. That would have to wait till tomorrow. Surely, truly, and all the other ponies that have been caught could just wait till the moon had gone down. Surely. That night she had a bad dream. A picture of several of the ponies standing with their mouths open as if they were screaming. But Desiree couldn't hear their screams. She could only hear a crackling noise that sounded as if a fire was coming towards them. At that point, Desiree had woken up, and it had been morning. Just a bad dream, she told herself. Nothing's going to happen to them. I can still have my breakfast. But the voice in her head said, Go back to sleep, Desiree. Then it will be too late. She didn't know what this meant, but she was so tired, she went to sleep, not even thinking about the second part of the message, it will be too late. Desiree looked at the clock. It was nearly ten o'clock. She'd overslept. She quickly ran down the stairs and grabbed hold of her breakfast things 
throwing them on the tray. She rushed her breakfast and ran into the frog book to get dressed. What was I doing, she thought. She ran into the back room where the box was. Bubbles? The little guinea pig came running towards her from where Mummy was cleaning out his hutch in the hall. Desiree heard calls of Bubbles? But she just said, he's with me Mummy and closed the door. Bubbles, she said, and she put one of the little necklaces around his neck. Then he could speak to her. She found that her first key was missing, just like the necklace. But she still had the three new ones. She grabbed hold of one of them and ran over to where the box was. Bubbles, turn this key. Do it quickly. I will, said the guinea pig. Because when you do that, she said, I can see what's happening in Ponyland. Earlier on that morning, the moon just been going down. What are we going to do? Whispered Gypsy. You'd better go and get the ponies. There's no time now. Once that moon disappears, I'd say we've got about ten minutes. They watched as the moon slowly went down. Then it disappeared. Suddenly the ground started to shake. And the black pony with one of his horrible laughs before saying you didn't get them back did you you're not as clever as you think suddenly the ground stopped shaking and he said but it was all a trick. I'm not doing anything. At least, not until tonight. <coughs> the ponies looked around. Tonight. Yes, tonight. Came the distant voice. And if isn't done by then. You are in trouble. Then he began to say a small poem. The fire already blazes giving ponies such a fright but it won't get any nearer at least until tonight then the voice stopped and the ponies looked around well looks like he tricked us said fruity tooty don't worry Said Applejack, I never believed it anyway. But we've only got until tonight. Well, I don't think he was lying. 
that time. Desiree jumped in the box. Would it be too late? Would something have happened to the ponies? She appeared in Ponyland. Where have you been? Said Shady. Well, I haven't been long, said Desiree. I haven't got the keys and the necklaces in the garden just before it got dark. Exactly, just before it got dark. Plenty of time. But as I explained, there hadn't been a chance. Soon she found out about the story. And realised she should have come sooner. Have any more ponies disappeared? Yes, a lot, said Magic Star. Forget me not, honeysuckle, rose dust, peach blossom. All right, I don't know how have to know. We don't know. We don't have to know who they are, said Desiree. But, when did they disappear? Last night, and before. They've all disappeared at different times, we don't know exactly. But, I fear that some will be caught as well. The fire came nearer. What shall we do? said Fizzy. Shall I blow some of my bubbles? Perhaps I can put it out. Try it, said Gussie. I doubt if it will do any good. The ponies have been given a plate of water. I don't know how the black pony thought they could drink out of a plate. She'd given them a plate full of water. Fizzy put her horn down into the water and began to blow bubbles. And they did start to put the fire out. Wouldn't it be easier just to throw the water on them? On what? Said Flower Burst. Well, on the flames. We haven't got much water, have we? We've got to spread it out. The pony looked over the flames and realised that Flower Burst was right. There was no chance if they just tipped the small amount of water they had onto the nearest flames. Or maybe there was. Let's soak the carpet around where the flames get to. Then they won't get any nearer. There wouldn't be enough water. There might be. Let's 
silly pony, said Heartthrob. Truly looked out of the window. Well, I don't know about the rest of y'all, she said. But I think the escape route's out there. She pointed with her hoof. But how do we get there? Said Cherry Strubilee. Sadly, there's no way. Oh, yes, there is replied truly through the window but how do we get there said Blockett obvious replied one whistler we simply use our hooves to break the glass I went there last time said Desiree. I know where the room is. I'll go now. She began to run. Well, I'm coming with you, said Milky Way. And so am I, said Scoops. And the two ponies ran after her. Back on Earth, Bubbles was getting excited. He was singing a song to himself. When there's a ray gets home, she's bound to give me a treat. If there's a ray comes home, then she'll get me a treat. Yes, yes, she'll get me a treat. And the treat will be the best. Lettuce with tomato pie. I'll be happy because I can reach the sky. And I'll have some nice tomato pie. Desiree arrived at the castle. Milky Way and Scoops had decided not to come with her in the end. She ran through the castle. How am I going to get into this room? She thought to herself. Then she remembered that last time she'd come here there'd been a key under the mat that was just outside the door. She looked under the mat and sure enough there was the key. She let herself in and saw that the ponies were banging on the glass. Don't do it, she said. You'll hurt yourselves. But they ignored her. There were flames between her and the ponies and she couldn't get over to them. So her dream had been right. How could she get make them disappear? Suddenly, a bottle of glittering Paradise Lake water appeared in her hand. She tipped it on the flames and they sizzled for a moment before disappearing. She ran over to the ponies. Come on, come out the door, she said. The ponies ran. But where is the door? Over there, can't you see it? The ponies ran out and began to run towards Ponyland. Thank you, Desiree, said Cupcake. Yes, thank you, said Wind Whistler. I'm glad you arrived, said Melody, but you could have been a bit quicker, couldn't you? Truly's idea wouldn't have worked. Well, I'd like to know what your idea was, said Truly, and Melody ran off. Desiree laughed. Do you think that the black pony will be back? asked Lockett. I doubt it, said Desiree. I don't think he'd bother. Why? He always loses. I'll be back, said her voice. Till I've got my pony land. Ha! Ha ha! Ha! But no one heard. As Desiree 
jingled her bell and went back to earth. My little pony, my little pony. In the time I was heading homeward bound. My little pony, my little pony. Twinkling stars are all around. Daytime is ending, night is descending. Smiling above the sun. My little pony, my little pony. Let's get together. Nobody heard as Desiree jingled her bell and went back to earth. Back to earth. When do you think the black pony will come back? Repeated Locket. Well, I hope, said Desiree, that we won't be having any more trouble from him. But I can't promise. And with that, she jingled her bell and went back to earth. That won't be the end, said a voice. I won't give up till I've got Ponyland. <laughs> ah.